You may not know this, but roughly about a third of the coaching calls I have with clients centers around men who are not very serious about being in a relationship with them. And we spend time analyzing that. So I wanted to dive into some of the signs you can tell early on if he's not serious about you. Now, I want to read to you a meme. I think I've shared this before, but just in case I didn't, I think it's really important to dive into this meme. And it simply says, it's a quote that says, I no longer want to see where it goes. I want to know exactly where you plan on taking me, better yet, on taking us. I don't want to repeat that forever. And I no longer want to see where it goes. I want to know exactly where you plan on taking me, taking us. Have you noticed that it seems like most men these days when it comes to dating, mating, relating, particularly in midlife, have no real plan on where this relationship is going? In other words, they invest time with you. They love bomb you. They tell you how wonderful they are. you are. They impress you. They do all kinds of things to convince you to be physically intimate with them. And they might temporarily engage in a relationship with you. They enjoy the occasional companionship. They enjoy the occasional connection. And certainly they enjoy the occasional sex. And why I say occasional, it's you're not living with each other, so it's not on a daily basis. It's on a sparse basis. And it's no wonder we find ourselves in situation today because the vast majority of people in the dating marketplace these days are in what's known as casual relationships. That's right, casual relationships. What's a casual relationship versus a serious relationship? Well, a casual relationship is oftentimes a lack of intentionality or a lack of direction. That's right, a lack of intentionality, a lack of direction. It's enjoying each other for your company. Let's just focus on having a good time. Let's take it slow. I don't wanna put any labels on it, but I certainly enjoy the benefits of having regular sex with you or sex whenever we get together. See, they might wine and dine you a little bit, they might impress you a little bit, but if they're acting in the ways I'm about to describe, these are good signs or strong signs that he's just not capable of a serious relationship with you or most likely anyone else. Now, why does this happen? Well, it's because we're living in a dysfunctional world. When I talk about dysfunction, the reality is, is most people as they age, their childhood wounds and traumas begin to bubble up from the surface. And not only their childhood wounds and traumas, their adult traumas that makes it very difficult for them to have the emotional maturity. And certainly many people don't have the relationship skills to actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship. So this is why they want to seek temporary connection with someone because they're not capable of going much deeper. Now, certainly there are plenty of men out there that are capable of going deeper. I want you to know I call these men the growers and the builders. And the reason why they're growing, they want to grow in a relationship with you. They want to build a relationship with you. These are what I call grower and builders. Now, a significant percentage of men are what I call users. These are the love bombers. These are the people that come on strong and then disappear. These are the players. The users are only in it for their benefit. And then sadly, probably 60% of the population is what I call spenders. They enjoy spending time with you, but they're incapable of actually any real serious commitment. This is true for women as much as it is men. While women tend to have a propensity to want commitment more so than men, men, this is true for women as well. A lot of women have avoidant love attachment style. And if you're not familiar with love attachment style, highly recommend checking out the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. I highly recommend checking out this book. You know, a significant percentage of women and men are known as avoidant love attachment style. In other words, they are fearful of love and yet deep down inside of them, they want love. And for many women as well as men, they have weak emotional maturity, weak relationship skills, and they have a difficulty expressing themselves from an emotional perspective. 
I call these people emotionally constipated. It doesn't mean that they're emotionally unavailable. They just have difficulty expressing their emotions because there's a deep-seated fear around giving too much because they feel as though if they give, they're going to lose. So it's no wonder we are suffering today in such a variety of ways. Now, what's the antidote for all of this, folks? Many of you women have what's known as a broken picker, a broken picker. What that means is you've been indoctrinated into the belief that chemistry equals relationship success and dating is all about having a good time. Let's focus on having a good time. Let's just have a good time because that's what dating is all about. I'm here to share with you, dating is a vetting process to decide if you want to be in relationship with someone. Many of you, as I said earlier, have a broken picker for a variety of different reasons. You might have an unhealthy love attachment style. You might have what's known as the imago, and that's I-M-A-G-O. This is discussed in the book uh, by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. The book is called Getting the Love You Want. I highly recommend. Write this down, Imago, I-M-A-G-O. By the way, all the books I recommend are in the links below in the description under Jonathan Recommend Books. Why am I bringing this up? We oftentimes are highly attractive to some part of us that needs healing centered around, centered around what we experienced in childhood. Maybe you had an emotionally unavailable father. Maybe you had a father that abandoned you. Maybe you have a contentious relationship with your mother. Maybe your mother was a very difficult person. Because of these reasons, we oftentimes find ourselves attracted to people that are like one or both of our parents because the little kid inside of us wants to heal that relationship. We are so magnetically drawn like a mirror. That's where the imago comes from. It's like a mirror that we literally are drawn to them like a moth to the flame. And then we find ourselves in unhappy relationships. And what we do worse is we double down by we believe as we give this person more and more love. If we just give them more love, they'll love us back. Sadly, self-respect is so lacking in today's world. In fact, I, I wrote about it in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Again, link below to get a copy of my book. See, when we actually invest in our own well-being, when we act, and by the way, self-love is our self-worth, our self-esteem, our self-confidence, our self-reliance, our self-respect. It's our sovereignty that allows us to attract a healthy, happy partner. And yet, like I said earlier, many of you have a broken picker. And to, today, we're going to help on healing that. If you do have a broken picker, right here's a, a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. And there's a, in the description below, you can connect with me as well. I help you teach you based on your personality, what particular questions you should be asking a guy to determine if he's really right for you. So what are some of the signs he's not serious about you? You know, I, the first and foremost, it's the most obvious one of all. He refuses to commit or he refuses to define the relationship. Let me repeat that. He refuses to commit or he refuses to define the relationship. Ladies, if you've followed my channel, you know I have a saying. Before the penis goes inside the vagina, I highly recommend reading the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, okay? Why? Read chapter one, which is all based is to, which is all about trust and commitment. Do you realize many of you are entering into an interaction with a man? I don't want to call it a relationship, an interaction that is highly sparked by sexual chemistry, only to find out that this person doesn't have your best interest at heart. What is trust? Trust isn't just about fidelity. Trust is, does this person have my best interests at heart? And I'm here to invite you all to start asking the deeper questions that's designed in this book 
before you ever start giving your heart to a man because a man who refuses or defines the relationship, what was that meme I read to you earlier? Let me repeat it one more time. I no longer want to see where it goes. I want to know exactly where you plan on taking me, on taking us. Here's the meme right there. I no longer want to see where it goes. I want to know exactly where you plan on taking me, on taking us. If he cannot define the relationship between the two of you, if he cannot make a commitment, if he can't label you boyfriend and girlfriend, if he can't discuss monogamy, exclusivity, if he just says, I need to take it slow, let's not put labels on this, that's a good sign. He's not serious about you. Folks, you know my sweetheart right there. There's a picture of her right there, her and I, Marie. I knew by the third time we physically were in each other's presence, I wanted to explore a significant relationship with her. I declared it. I was crystal clear. And I had a plan of how to take this, particularly in our case, as a long distance relationship. I had a plan. I didn't have the full plan on that third meeting. But by the time we had our fifth meeting, the plan was being formed. In fact, even though we were a long distance dynamic, within the first 100 days, we physically were together 40, 45 days out of 100 days. We spent more time than most people that live around the corner because we talked, continually made plans to be with one another. That's a great sign that he wants to be serious with you. And if he can't commit or define the relationship, it's not a good sign. Second sign, you don't come first in his life. You are not a priority. Now, folks, I recognize that when you meet someone new, they can't make you a priority. Certainly, if you have children or they have children, that might be a priority in their life. Maybe your professional life or their professional life might be a priority. However, the minute you start engaging with another human being, they have every right to be a priority in your life. Now, just remember, priority isn't necessarily always, uh, it's, it's not always static. In other words, your children are always a priority. Your work is always a priority. When you're engaging a relationship, every your children are important. Your work is important. Your health is important. All these are important. And your relationship should be equally as important. And at some times, you might have to put your children ahead of your relationship but only momentarily. You might have to put your professional life ahead of your relationship, but only momentarily. If someone continually doesn't put you at a sense of importance equal to the other things in their life, then you don't have a very serious relationship at this point. You most likely have a casual relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Number three, he's barely interested in your life. All your phone calls are very short. They're brief. You might ask, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. But that might be the extent of his actually getting to know what's going on in your life, what's going on in your inner world. You know, it's interesting. My sweetheart will spend sometimes hours giving me her inner world. Now, mind you, we live together. But I hear her inner world and I hear her outer world on a regular basis because I'm genuinely interested in her well-being. If he is not interested in both your inner and outer world and he only is sparingly communicating with you, that's a sign he's not serious. Now, here's another sign he's not serious about you. His friends don't even know about you. Maybe his children don't know about you or his family don't know about you. You know, folks, if you're engaging in a relationship with someone, you have every right to request. If you're being physically intimate with someone on a regular basis, you have every, God, I just said this, you have every right to request. The fact that you would even have to request some level of integration into this person's life already tells you you're behind the eight ball. Men who are serious about a relationship want to integrate you into their lives. But Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit back in my feminine energy and just let him lead. Folks, when you sit back in your feminine energy and expect him to lead, let me just tell you something. You are giving the job to the wrong person. Men are rather clueless to begin with, but more importantly, when they're acting ambivalent, when they lack direction, when they lack intentionality, they're getting the benefits of the milk, 
without ever having to invest in the cow. And please forgive that analogy. I like what one of uh, you beautiful YouTubers said, Jonathan, why should I give wife privileges at girlfriend prices? Why should I give wife privileges at girlfriend prices? You have, folks, if he's not willing to integrate you in life, then don't allow him to integrate his penis inside your vagina. There I said it. Number five, his communication is sporadic with you. Basically, these are the guys that reach out to you when they want attention, they want connection, they want sex, but then their communication is sporadic. Again, this kind of leads into they're not genuinely communicating with you to want to get to know your inner world and your outer world. Their communication is sporadic, and that's a sign he's not very serious about you. Men who are deliberate and serious and intentional and have a plan they communicate such that you're never second guessing whether or not where this relationship is going. Number six, he avoids sharing his feelings about you or anything in his life. He is, folks, now I, I know you'll hear some dating coaches tell you men only focus on thoughts and not feelings. Believe me, everything a man does, it's not necessarily based on logic. It's about how he feels about things. If Something feels good, he'll do it. And if something doesn't feel good, he won't do it. It's kind of binary for men. But feelings, if it brings him joy, if it brings him happiness, if it brings him content, or uh, content, does it bring him bliss? Does it bring him a sense of peace? Versus anxiety, frustration, confusion. Now, sometimes we deal, deal with men, we might be feeling these things because we don't know how our actions will affect you. But at the same time, keep in mind that a man who's genuinely serious has no problem expressing how he feels about you. And if any man tells you otherwise, otherwise that is just BS. That doesn't, doesn't mean he has to vomit uh, feelings of fear and anxiety, no, but expressing their joys and, tr and, and focus, or at least um, making decisions based on their feelings. That's how human beings operate. Yes, sometimes we do things logically, but the, the logic is all based on how you're going to feel about something. And lastly, number seven, he refuses to talk to you about the future, says things like, well, maybe a couple years down the road, <clears throat> five years down the road, 10 years down the road, we can talk about a serious relationship. Folks, uh, uh, by the way, I've got some good news. Next month, I'm going to have Rabbi Friedman on the channel. This is one of those guys that looks as old as God, okay, uh, sharing ancient wisdom when it comes to relationships. And I was watching one of his YouTube videos. talks about a man knows within 90 days whether or not he's going to be serious about you, roughly about 90 days. I knew in less than 90 days I wanted to be serious about my sweetheart. I was talking to my chiropractor the other day. I said, how early did you know, you know, how, how soon did you know you wanted to be serious with your now wife? <clears throat> Been married 33 years. He goes, I knew by the, I knew within the first couple of weeks I wanted to be serious. You ask any man who's in a healthy, happy relationship right now, how soon did he know he wanted to be serious? They will all tell you, most likely all tell you the same thing within the first 90 days. I officiated a wedding where I'd got a chance to meet Marie. He said to me, and I quote, it was right at the four month mark that I fell in love with her. So not quite 90 days, <clears throat> it was probably 100 days in his case. We men know very early on. And if by 90 days, his actions don't demonstrate a progression of the relationship forward in a serious manner, there's a good chance that it's not going to become serious. But Jonathan, I'm in a long distance relationship and we only get to see each other once every 17 years. Yeah, many of you that are engaged in these incessant communication relationships with people whom you're never going to meet, that's a great way to avoid the real challenges of a relationship that requires face-to-face -face communication, face-to-face -face contact, face-to-face -face physicality to actually navigate and actually build a relationship with someone. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. All right, those are the seven signs. He's not serious about you. 
I hope you take heed to this. I hope you remember that if you want to, if you want to experience a healthy, happy relationship, you have to be at the drive, you have to be in the in the driver's seat of your love life. Don't sit in the passenger seat, like I say, sit in your feminine energy. You are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't live that, give that job to a man.